Hi guys, and welcome to part 37 of Skyrim Mod Sanctuary. Now, those of you who regularly watch my videos know that I'm a big fan of anything that makes the game more immersive. Um, and the first mod I'm going to cover does exactly that. And that mod is called Birds of Skyrim. This mod actually adds a lot of birds to Skyrim. Uh, birds such as the bullfinch, crows, pheasants, um, sandpipers, seagulls um, on beaches and things. And it adds them to areas you really would expect them. You will find things like roosters, which I don't think were in the vanilla game. Uh, I think we had chickens, but not roosters. And they really do add a sort of realism to the game that it's very hard to explain. Basically, you almost don't notice you've got this mod installed. It just sort of blends seamlessly into the game. Um, but you really do notice it if you don't have the mod installed once you get used to it. And the one I notice the most if I uninstall it is the pigeon. As a city boy, I can tell you, wherever you get masses of people, you definitely get masses of pigeons. And seeing pigeons around Skyrim just makes it feel a lot more realistic to me. And very quickly, I get used to them. They become part of the background, and then I can't play the game without them. Now, I realize that some of these birds might not technically be found in Tamriel. I'm not sure if there's any lore on it, but they're all the type of birds that you would find in a Nordic country. Uh, the mod author actually uh, lives in Norway, so he's got a fairly good idea of the sort of birds that you're going to find. Now, the mod author seems very active on this mod and is adding new birds all the time and hopefully new features. Um, he seems to be trying to find ways of actually getting birds to land onto signs and lanterns, which I think would be absolutely brilliant. But all in all, this is one of those mods that I don't think I'll be removing from my load order anytime soon. It adds a certain sort of realism and immersiveness to the game, and it basically is added seamlessly. You just don't notice the mod is there and you find yourself wondering which of the birds were added in the vanilla game and which added in the mod. And that's the sign of a really, really great mod. So this is one of the ones I highly recommend. And staying with the theme of critters, the next mod adds quite a few more of them. Um, it is called More Village Animals, and as you can see, it adds quite a lot more chickens to this farm. Obviously, that means the name's not brilliant, because it doesn't just add animals to villages, it adds them to farms. A lot more chickens, and if we head over towards the animal pen here, as you can see, a lot more livestock. Now this of course is going to make places like farms a little busier and therefore require a little bit more from your machine. So if you have performance issues with large numbers of creatures, this is going to be a problem for you. But it definitely makes farms look a little bit more prosperous. The only problem I see with using this mod um, is the fact that adding so many more animals, it becomes a little harder for me to believe there aren't great big piles of manure lying around. Um, so perhaps there'll be an optional extra to this mod at some stage. Who knows? Now the next mod might seem a little strange, um, but it actually adds a lot of bugs to the game. And the mod is called 101 Bugs by a mod author called 83 Willows. And essentially what this mod does is it replaces the textures on all of the vanilla bugs, all the butterflies, all the insects, with very high definition textures, uh, quite colourful ones as well, that really sort of brighten the game up quite a lot when you see them. It also adds a lot of new bugs. Um, I haven't found all of them. Uh, but they are quite interesting and you can see the pictures on the page. The thing is with this mod is, it, again, it's the sort of mod that you don't really notice directly. It plays off in the background with these slightly interesting bugs flying around, these slightly colourful butterflies, just making the place look a little brighter, a tiny bit more interesting. This is one of the mods I've had in my load order for quite some time. And it's not like one of those mods that's really in your face. It just adds 
nice little details, sort of thing you notice every now and again. You'll be traveling along and you'll just see an interesting insect. Um, and it just, it adds a little extra to your travels. So if you're the sort of person who's looking for those little details, those extra little touches of realism, or just something to distract you from a hard day's dragon killing, this mod is definitely one you should put in your load order. I find myself getting distracted quite a lot by these things. And if you're not the sort of person who's into such mundane things as birds, bugs and barnyard animals, you ever get fed up of looting the dragons only to find out you're now carrying too much because of those dragon bones and you spend the next 10 minutes messing around with swapping things to all your followers or onto your horse? Or do you find yourself wanting to do some crafting only to remember that all your stuff is in your player's home in the chest because it's too heavy to carry and you've got to run inside, pick it all up and then come back out? Well, if so, this next mod is probably going to be something you love. This mod is the Conjurable Chest and Crafting Furniture mod, and it does pretty much what it says. The first thing it does is it adds a spell that you can pick up in the Dragon's Reach, the palace in Whiterun, and it allows you to summon a chest. Conjure chest. And that chest is a sort of limitless magical chest that appears at your whim and you can activate it, search inside it, add things to it from your own inventory, take things from it, etc. Really useful for all that rubbish you just don't want to keep carrying. Once you're finished with the chest, you simply activate it again and banish it and off it goes. You can now walk slowly over to the crafting Items, do the crafting you need, sell the items you need, and put all those crafting things you didn't use back in the chest. And when you first get the chest, you'll find in it some spell tomes that actually summon other furniture for you. Alchemy lab, anvil, arcane enchanter, bed, chopping block, cooking pot, grindstone, smelter, tanning rack, and workbench. And once learned, you can cast any of these spells wherever you like and have an instant crafting device. I can now use the smelter as I would as if I were in any normal smelter and when I'm finished with it, banish it. So if you're even too lazy to go back to town to do all your crafting, you no longer need to. Now, I personally don't use the summoned furniture because I like to actually have to go back to town to do all my crafting. But that chest is so useful. It gets rid of a lot of messing around, storing all these components in little chests and having to go and pick them up non-stop. I really do like this mod. Very useful indeed. And finally, something a little fun. Are you playing a sort of evil necromancer character and you've always wanted to summon a skeletal horde like in those old Sinbad the Sailor movies? Well, this mod allows you to do exactly that. Summon Skeletal Horde. Upon Sky Temple, you kill a skeletal wizard and you find a book, the Spell Tome Skeletal Horde, which once you open it, will teach you the spell. It also gives you a little information as to uh, how many... Skeletons you will be summoning when you cast it, which depends upon the uh, level conjurer you are. So if you take the higher perks, you will get more summoned creatures and a larger horde. You will find the spell under your summon spells, obviously, the conjuration spells. And if you select it and cast it, immediately... As you can see, I've got three skeletons, and they take up formation behind you. Which is very cool indeed. The only thing is, is if you turn around to look at them, <laughs> they go and run behind your back. So you can't actually look at them for very long. Unless they get confused, which does sometimes happen. Now, you can actually cast the spell a number of times, and each time it will summon more minions however there does seem to be a limit and the more of them you have the more likely you are to get one of them 
that does some strange animation. But as you can see, I've now got nine. And there are also spells that allow you to tell them to go over and attack a location. So I'm now attacking in this direction. And the longer I keep pointing there, the more of them that run off and attack. Or as you can see, one of them's gone into the funny swimming mode. There is also a spell to tell them to return. And the more I keep it cast, the more of them that return to follow me. So I just keep my finger on it, and they come. So that's very cool. I've got complete control of them. Uh, there is also an options spell. If I cast this, all my minions are now passive, and they will not attack. I can then cast it again, and they're now aggressive, and they will attack anything that is my enemy. So there you are. <laughs> I have a complete skeletal horde at my beck and call. And if I turn around, how many of them are going to turn behind me? Okay, there we go. So next time you walk into a city, walk in with this lot following you. That should definitely grab some attention. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, and installation for Birds of Skyrim is pretty simple. Go to the file section, download with manager and activate it. Same is true for more village animals. Go to the file section of the Nexus page, click download with manager and activate. For the 101 bugs mod, you do actually have a choice. There is the high resolution one, which is the one I use, and the lower resolution one. So if you do have performance issues, but you do want the extra bugs, um, you could use that one. Uh, for me, I would be thinking if you have performance issues, this is probably not the sort of mod you want, unless you really have a thing for bugs. Um, so download with manage and activate. Conjurable chest and crafting furniture spells is a single file. Download with manager from the main file section. And the summon skeletal horde, one single file. Again, download with manager and activate. All of these mods are fairly simple and seem to have very few issues. The only notable exception is the Summon Skeletal Horde, which does have a few known bugs. Nothing major, uh, but he does list them, so do check those out. And as usual, I'm going to finish with some screenshots that you guys have made. If you want to post screenshots for me to put in these videos, you can follow the link I'll put down below to my Skyrim Mod Sanctuary Nexus page and post the images there. Um, you're more than welcome to do that and I will try and post as many as I can each episode. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful. If it was, please click the like button. I always appreciate that. I look forward to seeing you guys on my next video, whatever that is. And until then, as always, have fun.